Who wants just insanely awesome? Those badass anime characters that are basically one-man armies. These characters truly redefine the essence of power and dominance in the anime universe. From Rimuru's massacring an entire kingdom's army to Utsuro fighting the entire cast. These are the top 25 one-man army moments in anime. Let's start with Shimazaki, the arrogant guy who believes himself to be the strongest esper in the world, second only to the boss of Claw. <laughs> This is true because Shimazaki possesses the ultimate telekinetic skills, allowing him to manipulate objects as well as people using just his mind. On top of that, he can also teleport at will and predict others' movements, making him a difficult opponent to deal with. In this scene, Shimazaki faces off against the members of Scars and takes them out one by one single-handedly, proving that he wasn't just all talk. During his fight, Shimazaki depended 100% on his pure instincts and it made him into a monster. What I love about this fight scene is the imaginative angles, clever camera tricks and awesome choreography. I don't think any other anime has been able to convey the threat of fighting somebody with teleportation and psychic abilities quite like Mob Psycho. It's truly amazing how the camera stays locked on Shimazaki while the world around him constantly changes in this dynamic battle. Moving on, we have an entry from the Garden of Sinners and it's Shiki versus the Apartment Zombies. A woman annihilating an army of zombies in a pretty kimono is a rare sight, right? Well, it's Shiki's style and she's still able to kick butt despite wearing her elegant kimono. In a world where beauty meets strength, Shiki shows us how it's possible to be both graceful and badass. Shiki looks at a horde of zombies right before her and pauses for a moment. She then decides to take some action, killing zombies left and right and throwing them down the building one by one. Her choice of weapon, everything she's got and maybe a small dagger. It's surprising to see how Shiki's able to kill every single zombie even when they're swarming around her, ready to bite her the second she lets her guard down. But Shiki's the type of person to not stop and take a breather until every single one of her enemies bites the dust. The coolest moment of this fight is at the end when she finishes off the last zombie standing, pausing as her target splits in half. Tomo was like, bruh. Next up we have Senjumaru Shutana's Bankai, the killer beauty of the Royal Guard who also holds the position of the 4th officer of the Zero Division. <laughs> This was the first time we got to witness Senjumaru's Bankai and boy was it gorgeous. And who were the lucky or maybe unlucky ones who experienced its glory? Yuha's elite personal guards. Now we all know how ridiculously powerful the shoot stuff are and how they annihilated the strongest soul society has to offer. However, all of them were overpowered by a single force, a single member of Squad Zero. After breaking the blood seal oath, Senjumaru unleashes her glorious Bankai which literally made the heavens and earth tremble. Lil Baro fell to her abundant blooming eyes whilst Askin met his end at the hands of her armor blade of steel. After that she moved on to Perinda and killed him using her bowels of black sand. Senjumaru's next target was Gerard who was finished off by freezing bed linens. Jugram was burnt down using the burning field and finally Uryu was overpowered using Star of the Dark Knight. Now that was a mouthful but in a display of sheer dominance Senjumaru effortlessly overpowered the strongest Quincy warriors without breaking a sweat and this is what makes her one of the strongest Shinigami. This epic fight is a defining moment in Bleach history because believe it or not this wasn't even in the manga. <laughs> Another perfect example of the prowess of a true one-man army is Rimuru's massacre of the kingdom of Falmouth's soldiers. <laughs> It's not every day when you see an anime character killing thousands of soldiers in the blink of an eye, especially a character that was wholesome at first. Rimuru was angered at the kingdom of Falmouth for killing the citizens of Tempest, including Shion and Gobzo. The only way he could revive them was to kill 10,000 humans and become a demon lord, which was the perfect excuse to get some payback. Rimuru then went straight to the Falmouth army's camp and showed them his wrath but in a somewhat merciful manner. No, he didn't brutally kill the entire Falmouth army by making them suffer slowly. He used his skill Megiddo to quickly finish them off with 
clean headshots. Men were falling left and right, and even the kingdom's strongest soldiers could do nothing but wait for the inevitable death. Now, let's be honest, a part of me feels bad about all of those soldiers getting killed, but they came prepared to kill, so they should also be prepared to die. Also, the death was so quick that they probably didn't feel any pain. That's what the anger of a gentle soul looks like. Slicing its way into this list, we have a one-man army moment that had a massive impact on every Berserk fan. It's Guts vs. 100 Soldiers. Yes, we're going to be talking about Guts, a character of immense complexity and depth as he's always been merciless when it comes to fighting his opponents. In this scene, Guts was supposed to protect Kaskar from a bunch of men and boy did he destroy every single one of them. During the first section of the fight, Guts kills around 30 men. After seeing Guts' raw power, his opponents started getting scared and ran away, realising they stood no chance against such a power of nature. I mean, they should because they saw him killing three men or so with a single slash. As the fight went on, he kept swinging his sword mindlessly, decapitating and beheading his enemies left and right. What makes this fight scene better is the background music, the beautiful guitar riff that perfectly captures the intensity and the emotion of the moment. This masterpiece of a fight deserves all the hype in this world. Now let's talk about Tanya and how she ruled the skies in the saga of Tanya the Evil. The tactical genius of her universe, Tanya is a force to be reckoned with when it comes to fighting off multiple opponents. This fight scene features Tanya against Colonel Anson and his troops. She starts taking out Anson's men right off the bat. She had the upper hand since she could fly freely thanks to her tech, skill and just pure determination. Even though Tanya looked all panicky while fighting Anson's men, she didn't let her guard down and protected herself from explosions while killing soldiers left and right. Her final face off was against Anson who was possessed by none other than Being X. After realising that Being X is controlling Anson, Tanya and Leashes her fury and shoots Anson on every vital point known to man. This scene perfectly captured a ruthless and even somewhat evil character. The sound of gunfire and explosions just made it more immersive and that's why they call her the Devil of the Rhine. Next up we have Gilgamesh vs Ryder, one of the best battles in the entire Fate series. <laughs> He's the kind of character that holds more depth than a standard villain, without a doubt. Gilgamesh also had an interest in Ryder, believing that he was one of the few who were worthy to fight him. When Gilgamesh finally faced off against Ryder, Ryder called forward his entire army through his noble phantasm to face Gilgamesh who stood alone, undaunted. Now Gilgamesh takes out his legendary sword and uses Enuma Elish, which he rarely uses. It's actually a testament to Ryder's worthiness that Gilgamesh chooses to wield this formidable weapon against him. The result of Gilgamesh's attack was so catastrophic that they were reduced to nothingness thanks to Enuma Elish's terrifying power. Gilgamesh stands as a one-man army that's able to destroy a real army with just one attack. Ryder could do nothing but be awed by his power as he commences his final desperate slash before Gilgamesh finishes him off and is the only one that shines brightly on the battlefield. Since we're talking about shining brightly on the battlefield, another character that comes to mind is Whitebeard from One Piece, especially during his appearance in Marineford. <laughs> It showed the Marines who's the boss while fighting them in the Paramount War. Whitebeard, the big guy with a big name, is known for his incredible power thanks to his devil fruit, Gura Gura no Mi. One of his coolest moves during the war was when he used his power to tilt Marineford and the sea around it, making massive tsunamis move towards the island. Everyone was terrified at this colossal display of power. Even Luffy froze when he saw how strong it was. He totally shook up all of Marineford, including the Admirals. And you know what? This wasn't even Whitebeard's 100% power. Imagine what this guy can do when he uses all of his strength. It's laughable how an entire army of young and healthy men are struggling to fight a terminally ill and old man like Whitebeard. Moving on, we have the Reaper of the Eastern Front, Shin Nozen, making his return in 86.
The poor guy had always been compared to the prophet of death as everybody in the same squadron as him knew that Shin alone would carry their memories forward as all of them would die at the hands of the Legion. They're not wrong because Shin had proved himself again and again as a lone wolf who wipes out an entire army of Legions. Now in this specific scene, Shin returns to the battlefield in his brand new Regan Leaf, annihilating an army of Legion that had been giving the Federacy forces a tough time. Oh, did I mention how Regan Leaf was new for Shin to handle but he still managed to operate it skillfully and killed every single Legion in sight. <laughs> Boys proved himself to be a one-man army flawlessly. Now, imagine Shin driving a Gundam. He would be so overpowered. Anyway, this man is just a killing machine that destroys armies of killing machines. In one of the best last stands in anime, we have Saito from the familiar of Zero, an average Joe from Japan who nobody knew would turn into an absolute badass. <laughs> Thanks to him being Louise's familiar, Saito can practically wield and master any weapon. He's known for skillfully using anything he gets his hands on, giving his opponents a tough time while they're fighting against him. We're able to see Saito's true abilities during his final fight against the Kingdom of Albion. And you know what? The Albion army consisted of 7 million soldiers that our boy was fearlessly ready to tackle. Why? Well, because he was always against Louise going on a suicide mission to hold off Albion forces. Instead, he took her place, willing to throw away his life just like that. With nothing but a sword on his back, Saito single handedly held off the entire Albion army. While he's eventually overwhelmed, it's still impressive to see Saito ready to sacrifice his life for the ones he loved and take down a huge number of soldiers with him. <laughs> Next on our list we have Gabimaru from Hell's Paradise. I'm pretty sure you know Gabimaru as Gabimaru the Hollow. This man just won't die. No matter how hard his captors try to kill him and no matter how many painful ways they try, Gabimaru just never dies. There's this scene in the anime where some of the worst and most heinous criminals are gathered, including Gabimaru. All the criminals were pitted against each other to determine who would have the chance to get the elixir of life and be set free. But Gabimaru easily overpowered all of them, killing them brutally, even with his hands bound. He annihilates the most number of criminals. He even bit off someone's throat, shocking everyone around him. What's truly spectacular about this scene is the stellar animation. Gabimaru's movements were so fluid and such a treat to the eyes and the way the sun sets as he kills his final target was just beautiful. The next fight scene I'm going to talk about right now is the kind of fight scene that you wouldn't want to blink your eyes while watching because it's Striga wearing her day armor in Castlevania. Now, if you don't know, Striga is one of the most powerful vampires in terms of brute strength in the entire series. The seeding of Striga's camp is exposed because of an arrow, and that's when our badass queen dons her day armor, stepping outside and ready to mercilessly kill her enemies. As the attackers started setting Striga's camp on fire and forced her companions to come out in the sun, Striga brutally and mercilessly decapitated them. One thing that's noticeable in this scene is that Striga went all out, even after she knew her enemies were just farmers. She even looked a lot like Guts, and when she saw more of her soldiers being eradicated by the sun, she went into rage mode and it was just pure carnage. <laughs> Moving on, we have the moment when Gojo eliminated all the transfigured humans in Jujutsu Kaisen. <laughs> Ah, Gojo Satoru, considered by many to be the most powerful sorcerer in the Jujutsu Kaisen universe. There are so many cool fights with him already, but here are a few where we actually see him try. During the Shibuya arc where he had to face Jogo, Hanami, Choso, and Mahito, we saw his raw strength when he casually wipes away Hanami just by moving towards them, and the only way the others survived was by making human shields. The tricks just get dirtier when they release transfigured humans in the crowd, forcing Gojo to make a choice. The cursed spirits, or the humans, what to choose. That might be a problem for you average sorcerer, but this is Gojo Satoru, and we get to witness for the second time his domain expansion, Limitless Void. The problem is that anyone caught in the domain is affected, and even one second in would kill a normal person, so how could he stop the transfigured humans while keeping the civilians alive? By reducing his domain to 0.2 seconds. So that means that Gojo charged around the crowd and wiped hundreds of monsters by hand in just a few minutes, all the while keeping every human in the domain alive and special grade curses at bay. 
all sets. We all remember Parasite, right? Because it had one of the craziest scenes where Goto fought the Yakuza. As an experimental weapon, there's still a lot he has to discover about his powers, and the best way to do that is with the help of the Yakuza. Though their help isn't the willing kind, actually. The scene starts with Goto politely asking the young man if this is the Yakuza office before his head is crushed against the wall. Then we get to a brutal and bloody battle between armed and deadly Yakuza and a superhuman in boxes. Goto dodges every strike with ease before bashing their faces in, and even using his like a blade to cut them down. So by the end of the battle, we found out that the whole thing was an experiment to see how many hits get in, and that number is just three. Goto was just a menace and seeing him take down thugs that would have easily killed anyone else was just so badass. <laughs> Fighting in a dress is never easy, but what about shooting? Well, just see what happens when Fabiola fought against the cartel in Black Lagoon. This young maid tries her best to be reasonable, but those no good criminals just never know when to quit. With guns all around her ready to fire, the only sensible option is for her to fire first. Fabiola blasts the legs of two members of the cartel before flipping away in a haze of bullets. The cartel tries to land a single bullet on this young maid, but can't seem to handle her aerodynamic movement. It goes so badly for them that they call for backup in the machine gun variety. They try to blast her away, destroying the bar almost entirely. The shootout was just insane to watch, and seeing Fabiola take down a group of armed men like a pro was completely badass. Personally, it looked like it was a losing battle, especially since the firefight was taking place in an enclosed space, but Fabiola made it look flawless. <laughs> Slashing its way onto our list is the moment when Luo Lang solos the bandits in Sword of Stranger. This particular fight is not only the introduction to the movie, but also an indicator of just how epic the rest of the story is going to be. The slaughter starts with Luo charging at the bandit, using the body of his guide as a shield as he jumps high in the air and begins to decimate the bandits one by one. Each slice is a death sentence, and blood spraying everywhere until all that's left is the bandit chief. Luo doesn't even bother to use his sword, but instead grabs the bandit chief's blade with his bare hands and tosses that very blade at his head. The moment you see fear in their eye, you know that Luo Lang isn't kidding around. It sets the tone at how dark dark and gritty the series is going to become, and I couldn't have wished for anything more. No list is complete without mentioning the iconic Levite vs Kenny and his squad in Attack on Titan. The captain is surrounded by Kenny's enforcers, all equipped with new and deadly weapons, but the odds have never stopped him before. We then get to see Levi's heightened skills in an awesome display of 3D movement with 2D characters as the iconic mobility gear twists along with the crowded streets. The highlight of this battle was definitely the bar scene, and we got to see firsthand that Levi isn't only able to kill stupid and mindless titans, but he can take down humans as well. Keep in mind that Kenny's squad were extremely well trained, and they even took out Levi's companions without so much as breaking a sweat, but their fates were ultimately ultimately sealed when they made Levi angry. Levi was deadly, cunning, but most of all, merciless. Kenny! Speaking of iconic... <laughs> when you need to talk about peak, few reach the heights this anime has, whether it's the story or the fights, but for this listing we're going to discuss the superhuman feats of King Bradley as he takes on the very nation he rules. Bradley casually walks into his front door, decimating a tank and no shortage of soldiers. Even the lieutenant with the giant chainsaw for an arm is just a second's distraction for Wrath. When do you ever see someone go up against a tank without any backup? Wrath deserves his name because everything in his path was easily decimated. He kills a lot of the good guys and that usually doesn't happen as well, but this is Wrath we're talking about. In the end, every last ditch attack they threw at him resulted in nothing. <laughs> Up next we have Sato's John Wick moment in our gym. CG anime may be a bit controversial with its design, but it certainly adds a special flair to Sato's decimation of the police force. This tiny old man with his sweater and shotgun, taking bullets like they were paper cuts and blasting every police officer with perfect aim, rapid fire and a smile on his face. What's even worse is that just like Wrath, Sato's not one of the good guys and the sat that he completely massacred were meant to stop him. It isn't long before we see the officer in the outer area waiting to hear word on the situation, only to find Sato covered in blood 
gun in his hand, walking away since no one's stupid enough to stop him. If the best of the best of Japan's law enforcement couldn't stop him, what hope could these normal policemen have? Yeah, Scarlet Tane. Now we have the newest anime craze with one of the coolest fight scenes out there, Ninja Gamui and the hospital battle. <laughs> We see Joe Hogan surrounded and assaulted by ninja assassins and he's angry. In his blind rage, he grabs one of their weapons and stabs them clear through the neck before he takes on more enemies one after the other. The rotation movement in the fight gives the battle a more open feeling and uses the 3D background to give the fight versatility. It looked even better because the art style had a western touch to it, giving the entire scene a more mature atmosphere. It's surprising that an unknown anime could have this great of a moment and it's become one of my favourites. Outnumbered and outgunned, Joe didn't give up. The battle ends with Joe Hogan standing in a bloody elevator and a reminder of what he's capable of. Then of course we have the legendary Alucard from Helsing Ultimate and this guy is a literal army. We witness the powers of the strong vampire as he summons the soul of every person he's consumed to decimate his enemies. He reveals himself to be Dracula and his army washes over everyone like a tidal wave and that scene where the guy kills himself to avoid Alucard is looking pretty tame compared to the horrors this scene tells us he's capable of. If he wasn't overpowered before then he is now because even in death his former soldiers when he was still immortal followed him and wreaked havoc on his opponents. There's no other person that could match his strength in the series and let's be glad he joined humanity's side even though he can easily betray us and wipe us all out on a whim. <laughs> When it comes to overpoweredness, no one quite does it like Saitama in One Punch Man. Especially during his uh, fight against the subterraneans. A man so strong that no one there can give him a good fight, that is until he wakes up to being slammed out of his apartment and for the first time in a while, bleeding. We're introduced to the subterraneans, the true earthlings here to conquer the surface and they've got their sights set on Saitama. Excited to finally face a challenge, he dodges the blow and destroys the enemy, but there's many more coming. He finds more open ground only to be surrounded again, so he starts the fight but with every punch he lands, more subterraneans show up to the battle until the giant ones appear. The animation goes into overdrive as we see Saitama declare this world to be his to protect and he has the fight of a lifetime with the king. The grand finale is about to commence and then he wakes up. Yeah, it was all a dream. <laughs> Moving on, let's talk about the popular parody series Gintama. It likes to mock the plots of other anime, but when it's time to focus on theirs, they go all out. As the battle for the fate of the Earth wages, Utsuro and the entire cast duke it out in one amazing battle. Even the Shinsengumi charge to finish the monster, but all they do is charge to their death as Utsuro cuts them down with such speed as if he never used his blade. Even the strongest of the Yato clan don't hold a candle to him. In a blur, he wipes out the remaining resistance and stands as one of the strongest characters in the entire Gintama universe. This man changed the entirety of the plot, the show's atmosphere, and what it means to be strong in the series. And he's not just fighting an army, he's fighting the entire cast. <laughs> Now we're going to talk about one of the largest man-to-army ratios in the list as Ainz faces off against 100,000 opponents in Overlord. <laughs> Ainz prepares the magic to destroy the army. He admits to himself that the number of deaths means nothing to him, just the excitement of seeing this magic come to fruition. Either way, Ainz calls forth the magic and it immediately decimates a portion of the forces, but that's not all. A massive black orb falls to the ground and covers the bodies in black ooze, transforming them into teeth-filled monstrosities that just look all the more disturbing with the CGI. Every single front of Ainz was either sacrificed or consumed and crushed by these unholy behemoths. Not even the strongest soldier of the opposing kingdom could do any thing because it wasn't only one monster, there were five of them. Ainz completely wiped out an army that could take down an entire kingdom in just one battle and in the most horrific way possible. Of course we save the best for last and it's none other than Madara versus the Shinobi Alliance in Naruto.
the legendary Madara Uchiha, spoken about with fear by the characters in the story, and when we see him in action against the Five Nation Army, we can see why. Just the beginning of the battle with Madara slowly walking to the army before gradually switching to a jog shows how little he fears anyone here. The animation shows every move he makes smoothly and effortlessly, letting us see how powerful he is and just how much destruction he can bring. He even launches a meteor, and it takes the combined effort of the Suchikage and the Kazekage to stop it, and when it finally feels like things are looking for the better, Madara sends a second meteor to land on top of the first one, destroying almost everything in its wake. Everything he did was completely badass, and not even the strongest shinobi of the Five Nations can manage to make him kneel. That's why he's the rival of the God of Shinobi. Madara is the uncrowned king of Naruto, but he's the king of this video. And with that, we're wrapping up this list of the top 25 one-man army moments in anime. There are lots of moments like this, so we must have missed out some of your favourites. Don't keep us hanging, be sure to comment below any scenes that you think should have made this list. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up and subscribe to see more of this juicy content. See you next time.